Hey guys, it's Phil coming at you with another video. Happy 4th of July. I hope everyone had a nice, safe little weekend with their family. I know I kind of had a nice little relaxing time with my roommate. We got to catch up and talk about how everything's going with each other because he's a nurse practitioner. We don't get a whole lot of time together, so it's nice to embrace the people around you and just start gathering with that. So, again, welcome and thank you guys so much for the support. Today I'm going to review a topic that a lot of people have been discussing with me and like having struggles with is I failed my exam. Now what do I do or I failed my exam for X amount of time and I don't know how to go back and face this exam because I'm afraid I don't want to fail. I don't want to be exposed to this, etc. Or I've been studying for long periods of time and now the exam is coming up and it's feeling starting to feel real. And I don't know how to react to this. So that's something that I've been wanting to do a video on in a long time. But like I said in a couple of videos before, my voice like died for like a week. So I wasn't able to release it. And then I did a free study group. And then I was like, how about I do this video before I release that video? But I kind of alluded to the topic in that video. But again, that is what I'm going to be going over. But before we get into that, there have 14 people passed since the last time I did my video last week so they are as follows so rudy b robert g tanya g allison s renee m hannah f heidi s benjamin k naoma c astra g annette m hope b liz m and laquel m and so far this year 240 people have passed so those are the people that have emailed me. I'm sure there's more, but those are the people that emailed me. So those are the people that I entirely know have passed. But without further ado, let's get into this video. And let me do that and then pop that up. Okay. So again, if you're interested, I do offer private tutoring. So feel free to reach out to me at berda24 at gmail.com for information. And my schedule books up two weeks to two and a half weeks in advance. So keep that in mind when you do that. And my next study groups, my next paid study groups are 77 Human Developmental Theories, 714 Ethics, 721 Medications and DSM. That one's going to be heavily, he, more heavily on medications when prior was on the DSM diagnosis with medications kind of trickled in. 728 is research, program development, program evaluation, and community organizing. 84 stages of treatment and diversity. 811, the most sought out study group that I normally do is acronym and practice questions. I break down each level of the acronym and go into questions and apply it to that. And those study groups are always Sundays, 7 to 9 p.m. Never ends at 9 p.m., but I just say that. Eastern time, so scale it back to your time zone. And if you're interested, my email is berda24 at gmail.com. And if you want to get more connected to me or get little updates from me and little tidbits throughout the time in between my videos, my Facebook group is Fill in the Gaps LLC. So now that that is all out, let's get into the actual video. So the first thing that I suggest people do when they do not pass the exam or what they need to start reflecting on when they get out of the exam is to entirely reflect on the process that you utilized during the exam. And why is this important? Because it's going to show you what worked for you and what did not work for you during that exam period. So a lot of times they don't practice how they're going to perform in the actual exam, so there's a disconnect. So I always tell people, reflect on what was it like when you got there, what was it like that you did during the exam, what made you anxious, what actually relieved your anxiety, what was, what was it about the questions that you enjoyed, what was it that you didn't enjoy, so that way we have a clear perspective on how we can build on what has been done in the past, because if you don't reflect on the past, we can't rectify it in the future. And a lot of times people are going to be running from the experience and simply say, I failed, I need to cut that out of my mind, I need to stop reflecting on that. But it's going to be your failures that are going to propel you to passing this actual exam. So don't run away from the details, embrace the details, and make changes so that way you can make it look how you want it to look in the future. So 
after that we reflect on the process, a key thing that a lot of people do not do, and they they almost are intrinsically like beating themselves up, is notice who is there for you after, well, during your prep and after the prep or the attempt. Are the people around you bringing you down or the influences that they're pushing on you? Is it positive pressure or is it negative pressure? Are people demeaning you? Are people telling you that you can't do it? Are people telling you that your goals or dreams are too big? Cut those people out. And it may sound like extreme or uncomfortable, but if people are not building you up to be the best version of your absolute self, why are they around you? And if you can't get people that are going to be gunning with you rather than gunning for you or trying to get something out of you, because this is becoming a huge thing that I'm starting to notice. There are way more people that are saying that they can tutor people. There are way more people that are writing books. There are way more people trying to say they're trying to help people, but they're only trying to help themselves or they're trying to create an image that they're trying to get something out of you rather than invest and pour back into you. Not every piece of information or not every person that is in your environment or structure or circle is actually there for you. They're there and trying to get something out of you and it frustrates me to the death every time I see this because people are like, is this resource really good? And I was like, I'm not sure. <laughs> is it gonna fit with what you need? Is it gonna fit with what you want? Do you actually need what that person is trying to give you and contribute into your environment? Because way too many people, and maybe people watching this right now, have four or five different styles, four or five different ways that the information is being relayed. And it's not that you don't know the information, you haven't found or boiled and been willing to invest in one way of doing something and writing it out until you actually achieve your goal. It's not that you don't have what you need. It's not that you don't feel that you're able to utilize what you have. So you're just grabbing and going for what you think is right. And most people aren't willing to tell you like, hey, <laughs> you have way too much stuff because they're trying to sell you another book or another resource or another thing or trying to get themselves into your situation when it may not entirely be needed. Again, going back and reflecting on your process, what was helpful, what wasn't helpful. And if you were a couple points off, breathe. <laughs> That's better than if you were 20, 30, 40, 50 points off. Do not let the small details kill what you're currently doing because you were close. So what you were doing is actually what you needed to be doing. So utilize what you did before as a learning tool rather than running from the environment and the situation. The third, which I always, always emphasize on, this is the biggest thing is you need to be honest how much this exam means to you and what you have to lose. And a lot of times, I'm talking to people and they're like downplaying what this exam means. They're like, it doesn't really matter if I don't pass. It doesn't, it's not going to affect my situation. It's not going to define me. It's not going to hurt me. It's not going to shed, but it is going to. So unless you're honest with how much this exam means to you. So when I was taking this exam and those that know me very well, I'll loot into it for those that don't. This is my shot to advance my family to where I thought we needed to be. My upbringing wasn't the best. Where I come from isn't the best. The resources I had weren't the best. So I knew and viewed this situation as if I do not pass this exam and I don't take this seriously, this is going to be my situation in my life for the rest of my eternity. So I need to do everything I can to pass this exam and to push past it because I have bigger dreams and bigger goals for the people around me as well as myself. So I need to live and breathe this exam and it may not be studying all the time, but my focus was on this exam because it meant the absolute world to me and I did not know it back then, but it allows me to do what I'm doing right now with and for you guys. So I had everything to lose. I didn't say, man, if I fail, it's not going to be a big deal. I told myself that I would retake the exam, but I knew that if I did not pass this exam, I would become absolutely obsessed with this and I would put everything that I had into it every single attempt because a lot of people when they fail, they like to withdraw and say, oh my God, this exam didn't really mean a whole lot to me or I'll just go back and face it again. It's like sit with this and let the pain overtake your current situation so that you know and are motivated to never feel it again and you're more focused than you've ever been. 
So unless you're honest and absolutely are able to sit down in your situation and say, this sucks, I did not do the best thing that I possibly could have done in that exam, and I'm going to learn from it. You're not beating yourself up when you're being honest, but you are actually looking at the situation for what it is and saying, I didn't get to where I wanted to go, but it's not that I can't get there. It's just I need to make some changes within myself. It may not be grabbing for another resource. It may be that I just need to be more confident in myself. I need to develop a routine. I need to connect it with positive people that aren't just trying to get something from me. They're trying to pour into me and invest as much as they possibly can into me. So unless you're honest and saying, this exam means the absolute world to me, and it may not define who I am, but it is a part of my identity. And a lot of people are putting too much on this exam and investing too much and letting it define who they are, but then also saying, this doesn't affect me at all. So you can't get your cake and eat it too. You, it either is a part of your identity and where you want to go, or you don't absolutely care about it and you need to be honest with yourself and say, this isn't really what I want right now, and why don't I want it that bad? Because again, if you don't reflect on what it means to you and what you can absolutely lose. So going back to my situation, I knew that if I did not pass this exam and get licensed and start making more money, my family would never advance themselves and they would never be able to see what's possible in their life. So I live my life so that way I can show future generations in my family what it's like to work hard and get to what you want. Because again, I did not grow up in the best environment and I still do not have the best situation when I go back home and it's not to say it's like the worst off but I have to be honest and say if I give up now how is it affecting people around me if I want to reschedule my exam if you're in that situation how is it affecting where you want to go and the people and what is that saying about your situation if you're not willing to invest in yourself and put forth effort and give max effort every single time in everything you do what is that telling the people around you it's not saying that you're less than, but it's saying, if things get hard, I'm just going to give up and not care. You have to buckle down, look at it deeper, and say, this exam means everything. And if I lose, I'm not going to lose everything, but there's potential that I'm potentially not going to get where I want to go. So being honest with yourself is super duper important, which then leads us into the next point, is you have to identify the tools resources and people to help improve but again this does not mean mean you need to buy something because a lot of times again people will fail this exam and they'll say yep I, I didn't have the right information going into this exam and they'll buy something. So that's where people will have multiple test prep programs. They'll have multiple resources. So when they walk into the exam, they don't know whether to apply my strategies. They don't know whether to apply this other program strategies over here. They don't know if they need to apply the book that they read or something that they heard from somebody else. So making sure that you identify what tools work for you. What is your learning style? How do you retain information? What is helpful for you? If it's being able to talk to someone one-on-one, -on -one, get yourself a tutor that lines with you. And that doesn't mean that I'm gonna work for everybody. There are people that watch my videos and they hate my style. They're like, dude wears a t-shirt, dude wears a hat, dude the highlights on the screen, I can't control this. He's just trying to get stuff out of people. But it's the people that actually buckle down and invest and reflect on their situation, which goes back to point number one. But Going in back into this, you do not need to buy things. I have plethora of information. I'm willing to engage with people. There are other people that are willing to do the same, but you have to make sure the learning style lines up with what you need. There are people that I talk to almost every single day or email with them every single day that they're like, I read this book and I didn't retain anything of it. Rating might not be your style. You might not be a visual learner in that capacity. <laughs> I myself, I'm not a reader. You tell me to read something on a piece of information, I'm, it's going to be lost on me. I'm going to be fiddling. I'm going to be riling and doing everything over here, trying to talk to this person over here and talk to this old person over here. People are going to be like, he doesn't care. It's not that I don't care. It's just that's not how I learn. But if you show me something, 
if you explain it to me, if I'm able to experiment, if I'm able to dial and get things in, that is what I know best about myself is if I know what I need, this is how I learn and this is the people that I need to learn it from. And again, not every person that you interact with is going to be having your best interests at heart. Because a lot of times I'll look at things on Facebook when people say that I failed my exam and the first thing out of their mouth is, here's a program that I can sell you. Here's the resources. I'm a tutor. I have a high success rate. I'm super dope. I can help you get where you need to go. And that may not be the truth because that is somebody just hitting someone that's vulnerable and trying to get something out of that person when they just need someone to pour something back into that person and build them back up. Because a lot of times when we fail, we try to tell ourselves, I'm not successful. I can't do this. All my experience that I've done is not worth it. I'm super... And it makes people question. Like there was a post I saw. I have 24 years of experience in the field. I failed my exam. I'm inadequate. That's not the truth. You have 24 years of experience and I wish I had that much experience in the field, but I don't. But it's not that you don't have the skill set or the experience to do the exam. It's that you have to find how to navigate this exam that works best for you. And what works for this other person over here, what works for this person may not work for you. And that does not mean that you have to isolate yourself from those resources and people. But you have to look at that and reflect on what you need and how you can navigate that resource that will best work for you and with you in your situation. And again, it does not have to come with the B. <laughs> you may have all the resources and information that you need. It's just how you look at it and how you navigate it may have to look different from what other people have done or from what other people have said. So again, the way that you practice needs to be the way that you perform. So if you're studying in a certain way and it's not going to correlate to what you do during the actual exam, then why are you doing it? It's not going to work for your benefit if you don't do and stay consistent with something. So you have to make sure the tools that you're using, such as a routine or the acronyms if you're using those, or... Am I going to take a break during the exam? How am I going to take a break? And a lot of times people will say, Phil, you're highlighting during your video. So how do I apply that during the exam? You simply use the flip chart that they give you during the exam and you write down key points and navigate from there. But again, most times people aren't willing to sit down and tell you like these things to help prepare you because they're not trying to help prepare you at all. They may not even be invested in your situation. They're trying to invest in their own situation and get something and progress themselves rather than trying to progress and propel you further from where you need to go. They're trying to think about themselves, which is egocentric, and not try to do what is in your best interest. Again, if you take anything from this video, it's not everyone has your best interest at heart. And they are just trying to convince you that you don't have what you need. And it's not what you have that makes you who you are. It's what you do with what you have that makes you who you are. And again, it's not what you have that makes you who you are. It's what you do with what you have that makes you who you are. And that is what this field has been created on. Social workers don't always have the most resources to help somebody. But damn it, don't we do the best that we can with the resources that we have to propel people to do amazing things. So do not... View your situation as different than what you would do and view someone else's situation. Which leads me into my last point is make sure you are doing the same for yourself as you would someone else. And again, as a social worker, we want to help everyone else and help them propel what they need in their situation further than our own. But again, we have to prioritize what we need and focus on our needs to propel us further because this exam is about us. And that is not to be like, we shouldn't care about other people. But that is to say that you care about yourself enough to invest and do everything that you need in your power to get yourself further. Yes, you're going to have friends that are preparing for this. Yes, you are going to have friends that may have passed it before you have passed it. But that does not mean that we have to take away from your experience, your skill set, your powers, and your abilities and focus on what you need in that moment. Again, it is a detriment but a benefit to be studying with people. 
because that person may be able to read a book, that person may be able to retain stuff faster, that person may be performing better on practice questions, but that does not mean that you are less than or that you need to do what they're doing to get where they need and what they're doing and where they're going. You need to focus in on your energy and your skill set and stand within your gift and do what you feel is best. And again, a lot of times you're going to have a lot of people telling you opposite things of what you actually believe for yourself, but cut out the negative feedback. And if it is not propelling you further and where you need to go and make you second guess yourself, cut that out. Because there's a lot of people in this day and age that you'll see on social media, they're going to say, well, I passed on the first time. And if you didn't pass on the first time, you may like unconsciously or consciously even feel less than that person and say, well, why wasn't I enough to get to where I wanted to go on that first time? And it may be that you had to learn something different and not every exam is the same. So you have to focus in on and be kind to yourself like you'd be kind to somebody else. And I always tell people when I'm working with them, when they're struggling and second guessing and beating themselves up, what would you tell somebody that you cared about that was going through the same thing and they always tell me i'll tell them to get back up believe in yourself and it's not what that you've done in the past that dictates who you are it's what you're doing now and your current to create a future for yourself but a lot of times people get too caught up in their past or their future and detriment or deter themselves from getting to where they need to go so they're blocking blessings and it's not the person that is telling you that you can't do something. It's the person that's standing by you when you aren't doing what you want to do that is going to take you further. So you need to focus in on what you need and what is beneficial for you. And that may mean that you have to cut yourself off of social media. That means that you may have to cut yourself from off from people that you're studying with. This means that you may have to invest further into yourself. And again, this does not have to be monetary. This could be taking self-care breaks during your studying because a lot of times people will say, oh my gosh, I skipped a family event or I skipped the 4th of July fireworks because I knew I had to study or I, I've been eating t worse or I haven't been going to the gym or I haven't been going to this like yoga class or I haven't been in, taking time to read leisure or I haven't been spending time with my family. Do things that you would have done before this exam came. And, that's mean, and that does not mean that you shouldn't focus in on the exam, but don't let this become your life. Do not let this take away from where you could be. Because if you aren't taking care of yourself, if you're not doing what is best for you, are you actually retaining the information that you need to? And are you in the best possible condition to pass this exam? Because if I'm burnt out, if I'm hating my situation, if I'm not even able to look at a thing that I'm trying to study and I'm like disgusted with this, I am not going to walk into the exam in a positive mindset. Because positive energy creates positive results. Negative energy creates negative results and negative outcomes. So we have to make sure that you're in the best possible condition that you can be in and doing positive things to get yourself there. And again, if people are trying to suggest things to you that don't work for you, don't do them. Because it's not... It's not that they're trying to like derail you. Maybe they are. Maybe they're gunning for your head. But... Do not let what someone has told you question what you're currently doing if it's working for you. Because there's a lot of times people have the best interests at heart and they'll say positive things to you, but that positive thing that may not be positive for you and you just need to disclude that. Because there's a lot of times people will provide feedback and it may, if it's a negative piece of feedback, it may derail you. But you have to focus in on what you need and where you need to go and not focus in on the failure. Because if you focus in on the small detail of failing, you're going to take away from the positive result. So a sixth suggestion that I have is view your situation. I don't know why I just did that all caps. So view your situation as this is the first time that you are doing this and it doesn't mean that you're walking in like naive but again a lot of times we'll say i've failed the exam four five six seven eight nine times but you have to focus in and get the excitement that you had before you took it the first time you were excited you were driven you were motivated you had a ton of goals you had a lot of energy you were pumped up and you were ready to face this exam like you had 
every piece of energy that you could ever imagine in front of you during it. You're like, Woo! I'm focused. I'm going to do this. I can do this. I'm focused. I'm killing this. I'm going to do this regardless of what anyone says or this anxiety or all of these things. Get that excitement that you had before you failed this exam and take that in with you to the next exam. Because when you have energy and when you invest and focus in on yourself and believe that you can do it, you are that much closer to passing. But a lot of times people will bring their past, they'll bring their negative experiences, they'll bring everything that they've ever done and failed at into that exam. Because I had an email from somebody the other day that said, Phil, I walked into the exam, I got to like question 50, I got up, walked into the bathroom, I was hysterically crying because I did not know anything on this exam and then walked back in and tried passing, but I couldn't get my mindset back into that. And that is the thing is if you convince yourself that you can't do it or if you focus in on one or two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten questions that you do not know, you are going to feel like the whole exam you do not know. But if you look at a question and say, I don't really know this, but the answers in the question and the answer choices, you are going to be that much further and then just shrug it off. You're not going to know everything on this exam and you shouldn't know everything on this exam. If you knew everything on this exam, you are like a, like it's super like computer. Not everything and every person knows everything. And again, that's why we have supervisors in our jobs. And that's why there's always somebody to check to. And that's why there's always going to be things that you're going to have to grow on. But if you feel like you're in a fixed mindset of I know everything and I can do everything because you went into school and you were getting 4.0s and you were like, I'm the man or the woman and I was doing everything that I could possibly do. You walk into this exam and fail and it's like you getting hit in the face and it's like, oh, my previous accomplishments mean nothing. And it doesn't mean that they don't mean anything. But this is no longer just a collegiate level grade or something that you can just spew everything you know and someone's going to pick out and think that you're deep. This is a professional level exam and a a lot of times our college educations don't prepare us because we're writing papers and if you write a paper and you say enough positive things, you're going to pass. And if they give you a grade like an A, you're going to feel like you're an expert in that field now. So that way when you walk out, you walk into this exam and you fail, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm no longer super deep and all my accomplishments need nothing. So I always tell people, cut out your previous accomplishments and focus on your current situation because not everything that you've done in the past is going to lead to a positive future. You have to keep working. You have to keep growing. You have to keep doing everything that you think is possible and worthy and everything to maintain what you currently have. A lot of times people forget where they came from and they built a life where it's success, success, success. So when they meet failure for the first time again in a long time, they're like, oh my God, I thought I was going to escape this for the rest of my life because I got a master's degree. That's not the truth. You will never escape adversity for the rest of your life because if you're not facing conflict and adversity, you'll never grow. And it's the failures that we experience in life that are going to propel us further in our situation, in our careers. It's not what you do correctly that's going to help you learn. It's what you do incorrectly and build from that that is going to define and make your situation better than it currently is. So, quick review, reflect on your process and situation and make sure you understand what went on in your situation, what growing points you have, and know that it's a learning process and stop avoiding the situation, reflecting and embracing and say, I need to reflect on the situation so that way I can grow and rectify it in the future. Reflect on who is there with you and for you during your process because, again, not everyone is there for your benefit and not always trying to invest in your situation and trying to get you further of where you want to go. Third, be honest what this exam means to you and reflect on what you have to lose during this exam. Again, it's not as deep as everyone thinks it is, but you have to be focused and let your energy flow towards that because where your energy goes, your focus flows. Identify tools, whether that's your learning style, whether that's resources that you currently have and you need to learn how to navigate them easier and better. And again, you do not have to buy something. You may have everything that you need. You just need to learn and focus in on it in a better light. Make sure you're doing the same for yourself as you would someone else. If you'd be helping and telling people to do self-care or telling people to view their situation Positively, you have to be willing to do the same for yourself and focus in on that. Make sure you're doing 
your situation and viewing it as the first time, doing yourself a kind gesture and knowing it's not what I do that defines who I am. It's how I view my situation and build on from what I've been through. It's not what you have that makes you who you are. It's what you do with what you have that defines who you are. And a quote that I will leave you with, and this is a quote that I have been telling myself because, again, not everyone is supporting me, is there's a group of people that need you Oops. more than you need to listen to negative comments. Whether that's coming from yourself, whether that's coming from other people, but knowing that there are people that are counting on you and wanting to hear your message more than you need to be focusing in on the negative comments. And that comes from a person that I absolutely adore, Eric Thomas. He's a motivational speaker, so if you need motivation, please go check him out. But again, I offer tutoring. If you're interested, my email is ber da24 at gmail.com my next study groups are 77 human developmental theories 714 ethics 721 medications and dsm and again it's going to be more emphasized on medications than the dsm 728 research program development program evaluation and community organizing 84 stages of treatment and diversity 811 acronym and practice questions and those are all on sundays from 7 to 9 p.m aka 10 or 11, depending on where we're at. And if you want information, go send me an email at berda24 at gmail.com. And please go to my Facebook page and like it. And if you're still here, please spam that thumbs up button at the bottom of this video and like it. Subscribe for more videos. And please do me a favor and do one positive thing for yourself so that way you're in a in a better mindset for yourself with this next week coming up. And I appreciate all of the support that you guys give. It makes me so, so happy and so proud of each and every one of you for continuing to try to improve your situation. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, guys. Peace out.